Hi friends, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome if you are new. I'm Cheryl, this is Table Full of Joy, and today we are getting ready for lunch tomorrow with our friends after church. I'm gonna show you my new ninja cooker that my husband just got me. If you have not seen the unboxing video of that, I'll leave a link in the description box so you can check that out. We're gonna use it for the first time tomorrow to do a pot roast so that it can cook while we're at church. We'll come home, it'll be ready to go. We can sit down and eat lunch, but we're gonna get a jump on dinner for tomorrow today because we need to make dessert. Possibly some bread. I haven't quite decided if I have the energy to do that yet. Um, as you can hear, I'm still battling with this. Whatever this is going on, it's annoying, but it's definitely zapping my energy. But I may make some bread. We'll see what happens. It might just be my easy, um, no need bread. It doesn't take any energy to do that one. So I may do that one, but I haven't quite decided. But first, let's get dessert made because that's something that's going to take a little bit of time. My husband requested lemon meringue pie. I have not made him a lemon pie for a very long time. That's what he asked for for lunch tomorrow. So I'm gonna make one. It's kind of fun because my friend's girlfriend, the people that are coming for lunch tomorrow, she has never had lemon meringue pie. Can you believe that? I was shocked when she said that. So we're gonna make one. She's gonna enjoy it. Her, her boyfriend um, loves it. He's excited to have one. So let's get this made. So I was fortunate I found a pre-made pie crust in my freezer and I'm gonna use it because as I said, I'm tired and I don't wanna have to make pie crust. So we're just gonna put some foil in this so that our crust does not get too brown while it's baking. The other thing I'm using, if you've never seen these, these are pie weights. You can use beans, you can use a rice, you can use all kinds of things in there to keep the pie crust from puffing up while it's baking. Um, I've had these for years. I don't use them very often because I don't do a lot of pies, but we're gonna go ahead and use these. So we're just gonna put these right down on top of our foil. So you can see we've got our foil pushed down up against our pie crust. Our oven is preheated. Just kind of move these around a little bit. And as I said, these are just gonna help this pie crust not puff up. It's just gonna keep it nice and flat. So this is gonna go in our 375 oven for about 10 to 15 minutes. So now we need to get going on our filling. But before I start the filling, because you've gotta watch the sugar, cornstarch, water, and salt mixture. Once you get it going, you need to be on top of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and juice my lemons and have those ready to go. I'm gonna have my lemon zest ready to go. So everything is ready for me just to dump it as I'm, as I'm ready to do that because it goes pretty quickly once your liquid or your um, mixture starts to thicken up. So let's get our lemons zested and juice. So I have a couple lemons left over from yesterday, something that I made. Let me grab my zest. I actually go a little heavy on my lemon zest. When I do lemon meringue pie, my husband likes a really strong lemon flavor. If he's gonna have lemon pie, he wants it to really taste like lemon. So they only call for like a half a teaspoon, I think, or maybe a teaspoon of lemon zest in this pie. That's not enough. That, the zest is where you get a lot of your lemon flavor from. It's not necessarily from the juice. So we're just gonna, I'm actually gonna go ahead and zest all three of these little, as I throw it on the floor. We're gonna zest all three of these little lemons. And we'll see how much zest that gives us. But I may end up doing one of these big ones too, just to make sure we've got plenty of lemon flavor. When you're zesting your lemons, you wanna make sure that you're not getting any of this white pith. That is really bitter, and that is not going to give you a really good lemon flavor. It's gonna give you a lot of bitter. Let's do our last one real quick and see where we're at. Yeah, I think I am gonna go ahead and zest one of the big ones too, because this does not look like enough lemon zest for me. As I said, if we're gonna have lemon pie, hubby wants it to be lemon. All right, so I'm gonna get one of these big ones out of the bag. I'm probably gonna have to juice one of these anyway, because I don't think I'm gonna have enough juice from just those three little guys. So let's go ahead and just zest this one. We are still kind of doing pantry challenge loosely. 
Um, I did kind of an update about that yesterday. If you haven't seen that, I'll leave that video in the description box for you as well so you can go check that out. But we are still doing pantry challenge, but very loosely right now because this month we have a lot going on that requires me to shop. I've got too many um, projects at church that I'm doing that require me to grocery shop for those and will end up giving us leftover things that are going to have to be used. That's not something that I can set it aside and wait for pantry challenge to be over. So I am just, we are still, as far as our meals go, we're trying to still follow the pantry challenge and just do, um, you know, like eat through our, our fridge and our freezer and our pantry. I did go to Costco today and grabbed some chicken because we are totally out of chicken which in my house that's not a good thing <laughs> so all right let's get our let's start with those little ones see how close we can get to that half cup of lemon juice that we need If you go a little over on the lemon juice, it's not, it's not a really big deal. Um, I sometimes go a little bit heavy on the lemon juice anyway. Yeah, I am gonna have to do this big, this big lemon because we're not even close to a half cup of juice here. <laughs> These just were not very juicy lemons. All right, so I'm gonna cut this big one. This thing barely fits in my juicer. That's exactly one half right there. I'm gonna go ahead and put my zest right inside this lemon juice because it's all gonna go in the pie filling at the same time anyway. This will just make it easier for me when I get ready to add it. What we need to do is we need to separate some eggs because we're gonna do the yolks are going to be for the filling and the whites are going to be for the meringue. Room temperature eggs are better for this. So we're gonna put our whites, doesn't matter how big a container the whites go in. I really need my yolks to be in a bigger container because we need to temper our eggs. Whoops. Well, that's not gonna work. All right, that is not gonna work, friends. You wanna be really careful too when you're trying to do a meringue later that you're, you don't have any yolk inside your egg. I probably shouldn't have thrown that away. I probably could have just cooked that one, but too late now. These have a really thick yolk on them. So we've got one and a third cups of granulated sugar, six tablespoons of cornstarch, and I like to take my sugar and cornstarch and kind of whisk them together before I put the water in, just to make sure they've got a good mix on them. Let's put in a little bit of salt. And I think I'm going to add a little water to this so I can kind of rinse this out. Because I don't want to waste that cornstarch. 
Okay, let's go ahead and put in our one and a half cups of water. We're gonna cook this on a medium heat until it starts to thicken. You want it to be kind of the consistency of cream of wheat. All right, so you can see our filling is nice and thick. So we need to temper our eggs now. You don't want to ever add these directly into your hot liquid because that will scramble these eggs and we don't want to do that. So we're going to take a little bit of these at a time and put in here so that we can start to temper these eggs. We're just going to put in just a little bit and we're just going to whisk this really, really, really quick. Putting a little bit in here at a time and whisking those eggs, getting those eggs up to temperature so that they are the same temperature as our um, cornstarch mixture. just a little bit more. I just want to make sure these eggs are nice and tempered. Okay, yep, they feel, the bowl feels nice and warm. You can see our eggs are nice, nicely mixed. All right, so I've got my mixture ready to go. We're going to go ahead and add our eggs in now. We're gonna to continue to whisk this. I haven't turned my heat back on yet. I'm going to in just a second, but I wanna get these eggs put in here. Just like that. So now we're gonna whisk. I wanna give these a good whisk first before I turn that heat back on. Just like that. Okay, we're gonna turn our heat back on, medium low. We're gonna add in our lemon juice and our zest. And we've got two tablespoons of butter. Now we're gonna whisk this until it is nice and combined. We're gonna, once it comes to a Kind of a light boil, then we're gonna cook it for one minute. And then we're gonna pull it from the heat. You wanna whisk this the entire time. Don't walk away from it at this point. Keep an eye on it, keep watching it. You only want to cook it for that minute or two just so that you can finish cooking those eggs. So let's come together, celebrate each other, stand united as one. I'm going to pull our pie crust out real quick. I can smell it. And I'm going to take this foil off. I'm going to put this back in the oven for just a minute or two, just so it starts to brown. All right, that's nice and thick, that's perfect. So we're gonna get started on the meringue now. Now this is a different meringue, I've never made a meringue like this before, so this is gonna be interesting to see how this works. So you take a third of a cup of water, 
and one tablespoon of cornstarch. We want to whisk this over medium heat until it thickens. I can't imagine it would take very long for this to thicken because there's not that much liquid in here. And it happens super fast. Just like that, friends, it's thick. <laughs> it happened that quick. That's why I always say you have to stay right on top of these. You don't want to walk away from it. All right, so we have our five egg whites. We're going to put those in here. We're going to put in just a splash of vanilla. We're going to turn our mixer on, start starting to slowly increase the speed. And once they become frothy, we'll start adding our sugar. Everyone needs a shoulder to cry on. Everyone needs a helping hand. So you can see they're just starting to get frothy. So I'm going to go ahead and put my quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar in with our sugar. And I'm just going to kind of mix that in just a little bit so that we don't have any clumps of cream of tartar in there. We're gonna turn this back on and we're gonna start adding our sugar to this and that's when we're gonna start making our meringue. Send united as one. We lift our hands up and pray. Lay all our love before him with all of our faith. He is the change within. Okay, so we are looking for soft peaks. That is a soft peak right there where it comes up and it falls. That is perfect. Now we're going to start adding our cornstarch mixture just a little bit at a time. We're looking for stiff peaks. So you want to be able to take your, your mixer and see how it stands up like this. You don't have it falling. That's exactly what we want. That's perfect for a meringue. So we're going to get our filling put in our shell, get our meringue on it, get it in the oven, get it browned up, and our pie is going to be done. All right, so we have our lemon filling. Get that all off the whisk. All right, so we're going to get all this put in our pie shell. I can still remember the first time I made a lemon meringue pie and I was so intimidated because of all the steps and all the things. It's really not very hard. It really is super easy, super simple, and it's just delicious. If you love lemon like we do, yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. And there's nothing like a homemade pie, honestly. So you wanna just get this all smoothed out, make sure it's all covered. We don't wanna waste any of this, so make sure we get all of this off of here. So our spatula, I'm just gonna smooth that out just a little bit, a little bit for the, uh, tasting mm. oh my gosh friends that is so good all right now we have our beautiful meringue we 
What makes a lemon meringue pie so beautiful is all of the big peaks that you get on your meringue when you put it on your pie. So you always wanna make sure you have plenty of meringue. This is a beautiful meringue, friends. I have never done a meringue that has a cornstarch and water mixture in it. Not quite sure, I'll have to do some research to figure out what the, the um, purpose of that is. It might just be an old fashioned way of doing it. You wanna make sure that you get your meringue on your crust. Make sure that you're getting it all the way to the edge because that's what's gonna seal this pie. So just make sure you have it all the way. And let's use all of it because you want that big, tall meringue on a, on a meringue pie. So let's don't waste any of this meringue. Now there are some people that don't like meringue and that's perfectly fine. You can still make this pie, not put the meringue on it and just use whipped cream if you'd rather. That still works, pie, works perfect. Um, I actually love meringue. I didn't used to when I was a kid. It was not my favorite thing, but I love it now. And you wanna have lots of, see how we have these little peaks? You want that on your pie because that's what gives it that beautiful color, that beautiful presentation, that beautiful texture on your meringue is to have those little peaks like that where it gets really kind of toasty when you put it in the oven. Just use your spatula and kind of pull up on it just to get that little peak. And just like that, friends, this is gonna go in the oven, 375 to 400 degrees. You wanna watch it super, super close, friends. Don't walk away from it again at this point. This is one of those pies where you don't just say, I'm gonna put it in the oven and go do something. No, you need to stay on top of this. You need to watch this because meringue can burn so quick because of the sugar. So let's get in the oven and let's get it, get it baked. All right, friends, here is our lemon meringue pie. You can see all these little peaks on here. Our meringue is perfect. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be so tasty tomorrow. We're not Good morning, friends. It's Sunday morning. We're getting ready for church. As I said, we're having friends over after church this afternoon for lunch. We're doing a pot roast and some mashed potatoes in the crock pot. I'm gonna try out my new uh, Ninja Foodie Pro. Super excited to put a pot roast in that this morning. See how it turns out after church. But we're gonna get our, get our uh, mashed potatoes ready to go. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do these in the crock pot. I love doing them this way when I'm going to church on Sunday because when I get home, they're done. All I have to do is put a little bit of butter, my few ingredients that I always put in my mashed potatoes and they're gonna be ready to go on the table. So let's get these put together. So I've got five large potatoes <clears throat> put in my crock pot. And I just got them covered with water. You want enough water in these that they're totally submerged. I'm gonna put in just a little bit of this better than bouillon. Normally people use chicken stock instead of water, but I use better, better than bouillon instead of actual like chicken broth or chicken stock. So we're just gonna mix that around a little bit. It'll dissolve in here as the potatoes cook. It's just, this is, I found this way to cook these with, um, see it was Tamara from uh, Southern Wife Everyday Life. She makes her mashed potatoes this way. And I did it one year for Thanksgiving and it was just, I thought it was genius. I'd never thought about doing it this way. And it just works out so well because then I don't have to worry about making mashed potatoes when I get home, they're already done. So I'm gonna put in a little bit of our buttery garlic salt <clears throat> along with that. I'm gonna go pretty easy. I don't wanna to go too heavy with this because the broth is pretty salty and I wanna have a chance to season them correctly once I get home from church. So we're just gonna put our lid on. We're gonna turn our slow cooker on for, we're gonna go for about six hours. We should be home in about six hours. <clears throat> I'm just gonna start it and just like that our mashed potatoes are gonna cook while we're at church we'll come home and pretty much everything will be done other than steaming a few carrots all right so we're gonna get a pot roast going in our new ninja 
cookie crow. It comes with this handy little basket, which I'm super excited to put the roast on that. But I am gonna get it seared down here first. So we need to get our uh, cooker turned on. So we'll hit our power button. I think we'll go ahead and leave it on high, but I'm gonna change this to the sear saute mode. I'm gonna tell it to start. So it's gonna start heating. We're gonna put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of our cooker. And I'm using, when I do my pot roast, I do it the way my grandmother did it with a packet of onion soup mix and a can of cream of mushroom soup. Both of those have quite a bit of salt. So I don't need to add any salt to this. I am just gonna put a little pepper on it and I'm gonna call it good at that. I can always adjust the seasonings in my gravy once I start making it after the pot roast is done. Rose put down in here. I've heard that these heat up really quick, which is nice. All right, let's get some pepper on this other side. Get it flipped over, get some brown going on the other side. Oh, look at that, friends. That is beautiful. All right, we're going to go ahead and lift our roast out. We're going to put our rack down. I'm going to turn this to slow cooker. start it. Now we're going to add all of our stuff in. I've got my one packet of onion soup mix. Spread that all over our meat. We've got our can of cream of mushroom. I'm gonna mix up some beef broth. So I got two cups of water and I just put in a, I just used my whisk and grabbed a clump of that beef broth. Give us a good whisk. I don't wanna pour this over the meat, I'm gonna just pour this down the bottom. Cause I really want that mushroom soup to stick to the meat. It's gonna keep it nice and tender, nice and moist while it cooks. A little more water. So all together there's about four cups of water in here. I'm just gonna put it right on and we're gonna head to church and it's gonna cook all by itself. We'll see you when you get home. All right, friends, we just got up from church. Our potatoes are tender. We're gonna get them drained, get these mashed. We're gonna finish our roast. We're gonna cook some carrots, get ready to put the bread in the oven and we're gonna have dinner ready. So here is my crock pot full of potatoes. We're gonna, we're gonna drain these in the sink real quick. So we're gonna put in a whole stick of butter. I'm 
going to cut it up into smaller pieces so it'll melt a little bit quicker. We're going to put in almost this whole caner, container of chive and onion cream cheese. It is my absolute favorite cream cheese. And I am going to, eh, we're just going to add it all. I'm going to just put the lid on these so that I can let them let this cream cheese and the butter start to melt. And we will go over and deal with our roast. Okay, so word of caution, this handle is hot. So if you've never used one of these before, I just found that out. It's very hot. <laughs> But our roast, look at this. Look how fall apart that is, friends. That is amazing. Wow. So we're just going to pile it on this plate. I'm going to cover it with some foil. We're going to set this aside so we can make our gravy. Wow. That is amazing. Look at that. All right, so we're gonna set this aside so I can make gravy. I'm gonna use a spatula. Get all this sauce off the side. And because this is a non-stick pan, I'm not gonna use a metal whisk. I'm gonna grab one of my silicone ones. So the way I learned to thicken gravy is to use some softened butter and cornstarch. We're just gonna put a little bit of cornstarch in here with our butter. Take your fork and just kind of mash that cornstarch around in that butter. You're gonna make a paste. You can do this with flour if you don't have cornstarch. I forget the name for this, but there's actually a name for it. They do this in a lot of French cooking where they use butter and flour or butter and cornstarch to make your thickener for sauces and gravies. It just gives you a much richer uh, gravy or sauce, but with the, having the butter in it also gives it an opportunity to not to clump because you've already got it kind of mixed into your fat. So I don't know if I'm going to need all of this. It's boiling as you can see. So I'm going to scrape off part of this and put it in here. And we're just going to whisk it. I think I need a little bit more. I can feel it's thickening up just a little bit. I think we're gonna go ahead and use the rest of this. I think what I'm gonna do is grab a spoon. I'm just gonna get some of the liquid out of here put it right in this bowl so I can get the rest of that butter and cornstarch mixture. Just use that hot liquid to dissolve it.
We're just gonna let this sit over here and simmer and thicken up. All right, so we're gonna start mashing our potatoes. Looks like our butter and cream cheese has started to soften. So just get in here with your potato masher. Gonna use some half and half. I love making the mashed potatoes right in this crock pot because it's already hot, it's still on, which means I'm mashing these potatoes and they're gonna stay nice and warm until our guests arrive and we're ready to sit down to eat dinner. But I am gonna check them for seasoning because as I said I, this morning, I only put a little bit of salt in these because I was using broth to cook the potatoes. And the broth has got quite a bit of salt in it. Our meat's going to have quite a bit of salt because of the onion soup mix and the cream mushroom soup. So I just want to make sure that we're not giving them a salt lick for, for dinner. So let's give these potatoes a quick little taste and see we are where, we, where we're at with salt. I mean, those are really good. I do think they could have a little bit more salt. So we're gonna use a little bit of our buttery garlic salt. We're gonna put our lid on and we're just gonna let these hang out until we're ready to serve dinner. Our friends showed up and this dinner was absolutely delicious. The uh, Ninja Foodie is incredible and I cannot wait to use this. I have a feeling it's gonna replace a whole lot of appliances in my kitchen. Friends, I wanna thank you so much for joining me in my kitchen as we made a delicious lunch for our friends. If you have not yet, hit, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and we'll talk to you in the comments. Have a great day, friends, and God bless.